time has finally arrived. We have left the confines of Sydney, Australia and finally made our first international trip. We are going to Thailand, or rather we're heading to Thailand. However, we have a four hour layoff and the layoff is in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. So I might as well show you some things you can do in the Kuala Lumpur International Airport. As I'll be doing that, I'll be sharing with you some story times of my first encounters and first experiences along the way. Let's get it. My experiences so far have not been the greatest. I've probably come across every single worst thing you can come across as your first flight or flights in general. First and foremost, we entered the plane, which was 40 minutes late from takeoff with zero air conditioning. Everyone almost passed out from asphyxiation. Everyone was struggling in bloody sweating bullets. So that's the first mistake. Secondly, the, the flight itself was one hour delayed to landing. And then now I have a four hour layoff to the next flight, which is taking us to Phuket, which is an extra two hours late. So why not show everyone, you know, a few bits and bobs of what you can do in the Kuala Lumpur airport itself. So first and foremost, alcohol. I mean, I don't buy a drink. So here's one of the first issues I've already encountered. These prices are meant to be duty free, which basically you pay no tax or less tax and the cost of the goods are less than what you would purchase them elsewhere. But from my experience, for example, a Shivers 15, 423, Rigat, Rignet, which is the Malaysian currency. You translate that to the Australian dollar and uh, it's one third of the cost. I don't remember that bottle costing $120 in Australia. Also, Durin, yeah, Durin. There's no shortage of Durin sweets and confectionery and goods in and around the airport itself. But immediately, as I mentioned, you're greeted to alcohol from all your favorite brands what i realized a massive brand was or a massive brand is is your cognacs or cognacs or whatever as mentioned like these are meant to be duty free like there's another example that's a shivers 12 which is like your bare minimum. In Australia, that's like 40 bucks, but for some reason, they're selling here for $70, which, yeah. I mean, so much for duty-free, tax-free. On the way here in the Australian, in the Australian airport, the bottles are like three times cheaper than here. So that's the first thing I've realized anyway, upon entering the international jurisdiction of alcohol. Now the next thing you can do in the airport is waste your money on again what was meant to be duty free perfumes and products but is ultimately priced three times higher than what you would usually see in Australian stores. So I'm really scratching my head with this one on literally every single front of the store there is duty free written on it which should translate to lower prices but everything is bloody double or triple does not bloody make sense let's have a quick look around this is another thing you can do waste your bloody money now exiting the perfume scamas And again, just more and more and more bloody alcohol. And in this section over here, they're selling just a bunch of cigarettes and cigars. Again, like I don't understand these prices. 
to be fair, the cigarette prices, look, again, I don't smoke, but the cigarette prices, I checked them out, they are ch way cheaper than what you'll find in Australia, but I think Australia is trying to deter, deter people from smoking, so. Now moving into the third thing that you can do at Kuala Lumpur Airport. Now I've figured this out very, very early on and very quickly. We're gonna come up to it now, but I'm not gonna go too close because they're gonna overhear me. I had a minor argument with them earlier, is the currency exchanges, the biggest scam known to mankind. They literally operate on scamming people. That's how the business is alive. They sell you exchange rates that are like 20% less of what you would pay literally anywhere else. If you just get a simple bank card, like an Australian bank card, you pay 0% conversion fees. So it's meant to be 0.33 right now anyway, this time of day or this time and date. The conversion of one Australian dollar is 0 0.33 Malaysian dollars. Well, you go to this bloody conversion place, it's 0 0.65. You try to, you know, bargain with them and there's zero Fs given. They say, get lost or bugger off. And somehow you gotta figure out, you know, where to get the conversion from or their currency. Cause even small things like this or what we're gonna come up to next, which is food, there's no bloody, you can't pay with anything else but Malaysian currency. So you either have to have a bank card, which does 0% conversion fees, or you go to this place I'm about to show in a second, which is the biggest scammers known to mankind. Right, so this was exactly what I was referring to. The exchange currency, specifically this place. Honestly, don't waste your time, don't waste your money, and don't get bloody scammed. Now, of course, the next on the list, and the most obvious, is food. We got a lot of places I've never seen before in Australia. Ah, uh, yum, whatever the hell that is. Fresh, which is some juices, an Indian cuisine place down there. You got Burger King, which in, in, in Australia, that's called Hungry Jacks, which sell pretty much the exact same food. This is the lobby down here. And then of course, continuing on for the food selection, you've got McDonald's. I mean, which, which location on earth doesn't have a McDonald's variation? Or let's call it a McDonald's franchise. And you've got a McCafe over there. And a place, I don't know, I looked at this menu and it took me five seconds to know that I did not want to eat at this place. It's called All American Food, which is honestly, I would not go there. Um, then you've just got a central lobby. What I've realized about this airport is they make a lot of money off massage chairs. Like there's literally, I reckon a total of 50 massage chairs scattered throughout this airport terminal. Now, transitioning to the Fourth thing you can do is lounge. There's, there's lounges scattered throughout the airport as well. Or some of them, there are even sleep, sleep terminals or sleep beds. If you have a long, long layoff to your next flight, you have the option of sleeping as well. So this was the sleeping cap 
capsule place I mentioned, basically you enter and you got these options on the wall. Pretty good, pretty good option. If you want to burn some time, you got a massive layoff. Talking about the other quote unquote duty free place, which again, as mentioned, that ain't duty free, ladies and gentlemen. The prices are shocking, even more bloody expensive than upstairs. Just to prove my point further, same exact current currency exchange from upstairs to downstairs and the prices are completely different. And when confronting the two exact identical stores about their fluctuations in pricing, their simple answer was bugger off. So that doesn't already give further proof to the pudding of definitely not trusting these exchanges because there are straight scamars, then I would definitely listen to myself if I was me. And finally, the final thing, which is quite simple actually, is shopping. So if you want to get scammed in a different way, then you can buy brands that no one really buys. Let's be straight up. That's, that's pretty much it. That's all you can do. To be fair, the terminal is quite, quite small. Down there, there's more, some more massage chairs. It says movie lounge, but there's literally not a single screen or TV. So you're quite limited to options, to be fair. Most of the people are just sitting down on massage chairs and burning some time in their phones. That's what I've seen anyway, so that's my first experience of international flying or just in general being on international soil also in this I don't know what store this is but they're selling Apple products for a ridiculously marked up price which just doesn't make sense to me to be honest like there's, they're selling for like 8,000 an iPhone 15 Pro for 8,000 Malaysian dollars, which translates to like 2.7 thousand Australian dollars, which is absolutely absurd. By the way, it's 15, 512 gigabytes. So, conclusion of what to do at the Kuala Lumpur Malaysian International Airport. One is get duty free GST, quote unquote, alcohol and goods, which I wouldn't purchase because there are straight scamars. Two, actually get scamars by the currency exchange places, which again, I don't recommend. And number three, we have shopping, we have food, number four. Number five, we have relaxation. So you can either sleep in the rent, rent a bed places or the massage chairs, which everyone seems to be doing and burning their time on. That's my conclusion. Hope to see you in the next episode where, where I'll be making videos in Phuket, Thailand. Let's go, baby. See you guys in the next video.